When Elon Musk launched SpaceX, his goal was to situate human life outside of Earth. The company's innovative prowess came to play after Elon and its partners discovered that they couldn't buy a rocket from Russia, the world's leading spaceship producers. Despite their haggling, they were turned down because of how little capital they had. Musk then did some calculations and discovered just how affordable spaceship production would be if they did things his way. Then the journey began. SpaceX became the first private company to launch a spaceship to low Earth orbit with the fourth launch of its Falcon 1 rocket in 2008. That launch would have crippled the fledgling company if it had gone south, but luckily it didn't. SpaceX has several successful launches to its name and has helped several companies achieve their dream of putting their payloads into space, but it doesn't intend to stop there. The goal is other planets, and the means to this goal is the Starship, a stunning piece of innovation. Want to find out how the Starship differs from any other spaceship ever built? Well, you better watch this video until the end, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Elon Musk is used to conceiving and producing impressive technology. Before we get into why the Starship has joined the League of the Greats, let's take a look at what the Starship is exactly. Starship has a dry mass of 200 tons, a fuel slash oxygen mass of 1200 tons, and a normal payload of 150 tons. Because it combines its impressive mass with high performance, methane, oxygen, vacuum engines, Starship is qualified for over 7 kilometers per second of velocity, which is very important. But Starship and Super Heavy are completely reusable. That is what makes it such an enviable vehicle. Reports say that Starship's second stage will be prepared to lift roughly 100 metric tons into LEO, refuel in orbit, and then go on to the moon or even Mars. When landing on the red planet, Starship could use its aero raking technology to slow down upon re-entry, and then fire its engines against the direction of its travel to land vertically. After refueling on Mars, it's going to be capable of escaping Mars's gravity to head back home. Why is reusability exciting to this company? The Starship will be the first multi-purpose spaceship to exist, a true one-fits-all machine. It is super efficient, and it's a great machine that has been designed to do everything a spaceship can do and more. At the moment, SpaceX is using the Dragon and the Crew Dragon to supply the ISS and launch astronauts and has a different setup to launch satellites into orbit. Starship could do both and much more, which saves a lot. Some things the ship can do is launch payloads into Earth orbit with its cargo version, land on the International Space Station, and carry cargo and astronauts up and down with its crew version. The ship can also be refueled while in orbit with a tanker version of Starship, which is a modified version that will carry nothing but the fuel needed for the other ship. It can also land on the moon vertically, which will provide an opportunity for SpaceX to build a moon base. Musk's goal of reaching Mars and landing on the surface vertically to build a Mars colony will be fulfilled with the Starship. As our moon is not the only one in the solar system, the Starship will be perfect for reaching other moons of the solar system and landing on them to explore. Popular moons like Enceladus, Europa, and Titan will be more than sites to imagine. Impressively, Starship would also be able to carry out intra-Earth transit to carry passengers from one side of the globe to the other in a short 30 to 45 minutes. Another stunning part of the ship is its engines. The new Raptor engines beat the Merlin engines used in the Falcon rockets in performance. The new engines have a thrust level of 380,000 pound force, which is a world away from Merlin's 190,000 pound force. The engines have the added advantage of reusability, and so will require very little or no maintenance at all. This would work great for a ship traveling millions of miles, sometimes with no human passengers to run maintenance. The existing Merlin engines on Falcon 9 rockets make use of the rocket-graded RP-1 kerosene. But because SpaceX has decided that Starship needed to be able to refuel on Mars using local resources, they decided to go for methane. Methane, CH4, can be synthesized from CO2 in a simple process called Sabatier reaction. Sabatier reaction involves the reaction of hydrogen with carbon dioxide at elevated temperatures, optimally 300 to 400 degrees Celsius, and pressures in the presence of a nickel catalyst to produce methane and water. This will allow SpaceX to deliver as much cargo to the surface of Mars as reasonable, so they don't have to carry the fuel that is required for the trip back to Earth to Mars. The ship will land with close to zero fuel left in the tanks and use the Martian CO2 in the atmosphere to create methane and oxygen to fuel the rockets. Starship's high-level thrust is a potential reason for the vehicle to have issues with landing. Engines need to be able to slow themselves down to have a velocity of zero when the altitude is zero. However, different experimental pressures could affect an engine's capability to throttle down. 
This inability to throttle down is why Falcon 9's second stage don't land vertically. Landing is very difficult without proper throttles, and hovering is impossible. Reports have shown that Starship engines will have dual bell nozzles that will allow them to work in a vacuum with the high throttle, but will also enable the engines to throttle down to as low as around 20% at sea level ambient pressure, which makes them perfectly capable of landing the spacecraft vertically with a landing profile that can be survived by the human body. A truly extraordinary feature for Starship's design is the wings. There are three of them. One is still, but two of them can be trolled by hydraulics to adjust Starship's proper angle during atmospheric re-entry and aerobraking. This means that Starship has two actuated wings. This is essential to decrease the ship's tendency to fly uncontrollably, like a brick, also known as its ballistic coefficient. Cylindrical objects are not stable during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Remember the shuttle was not cylindrical with its delta wings, so having wings is important. There are a few risks with the wing design, however. The risk of launch failure went up with the presence of the wings, as moving parts have a higher chance of breaking down. There isn't an opportunity to step out and fix them with uncrewed missions. However, SpaceX's engineers work out a plan against failure. Another huge risk is the wear and tear that accompanies Martian dust. It reportedly contains perchlorate salts and is electrostatically charged, so it sticks to everything, including these moving parts. This will make Mars colonists have to take extra caution to either clean up the wings before liftoff or cover them with something and seal them to protect them from the dust. Starship is an innovation that, at first glance, seems unnecessary. The same can be said about the choice in its construction material. SpaceX Starships, especially the Falcon fleet, have always been made with carbon fiber, so making the Starship with the same material would be easier as it feeds off an already functional system. In truth, carbon fiber is extremely expensive. They sell for about $135 per kilogram and still have a 35% scrap rate. That means that 35% of each kilogram cannot be used. That calculated, carbon fiber costs about $200 per kilogram. On the other hand, stainless steel, SpaceX's chosen material for Starship, costs about $3 per kilogram. Talk about a high saving. For a rocket that has to be reused, you need to be constructing it out of a material that can withstand high temperatures during re-entry, but will also work seamlessly with supercooled cryogenic fluids. Carbon fiber is limited to around 300 Fahrenheit. You may push it to 350, and some CFs can get close to 400, but that has the consequential repercussions of structural integrity loss. With stainless steel, you can easily do 1500, 1600 Fahrenheit. That is significantly better and makes it possible for SpaceX to go without a replaceable heat shield that will be always changed. Starship is impressive and has the space technology world drooling. However, how exactly can a private company like SpaceX afford to mass produce it? Because SpaceX is a privately funded company, they need to keep an eye on profit margins and keep the company alive. Therefore, they are unable to afford unnecessary steps in engineering and design. And this is a good thing, a key factor that made them successful. When time and money are constraints, you are forced to focus, and SpaceX has had to do just that. For SpaceX, this resulted in an estimated cost to develop the Starship and Super Heavy at around $5 to $10 billion, which is ridiculously inexpensive, especially when compared to other spacecraft. The most powerful rocket ever flown, the Saturn V, cost around $42 billion to develop, calculated to $2018. SpaceX estimated that the first launch of the ship will cost $150 million, but it will eventually decrease quickly, overtaking even the Falcon 1. It is expected to be as low as around $5 million per launch. If Elon will make his plans become a reality for a $100,000 Martian ticket, calculating with 100 crew members, this puts the full price at around $10 million. Of course, SpaceX will continue to launch payloads for other companies to get payoffs that will bankroll the Starship missions. One other remarkable way they could be making their money is through the company's communication satellite, Starlink. SpaceX started its satellite system when it realized just how much its clients were making from launching satellites, much more than they would be as the launch providers. Unlike businesses like mining in space or solar power, space-based communication satellites fulfill a genuine market need. If satellite manufacturers can make money launching $100 million worth of satellites into space on $100 million rockets, how much money could SpaceX make launching its own satellites for much, much less? SpaceX's system is actually impressive, like everything it produces seems to be. It provides broadband services to people as far away as Australia. Starship definitely has what it takes to spark a revolution in space technology. How long do you think it will take before the ship's design starts to be copied? Or will it be a case of many promises unfulfilled? 
Let us know what you think in the comments below, and thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!